Welcome to Sharon, where the arms of Christ are always open. These are your announcements. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications now. To all of our guests with us today in person and online, please text WELCOME to 833-6-SHARON. We would love to connect with you and share with you what's going on here at Sharon. Text WELCOME to 833-674-2766 now. To all of our members in person and online, WELCOME HOME. Become a digital disciple. Please take a moment to invite your family and friends to join us for our worship experience today. Make sure to share this video and tag your friends. Want to stay connected to what's going on at Sharon? Text the word UPDATE to 833-674-2766. Again, text UPDATE to 833-674-2766 now to stay in the loop. Dial into our weekly prayer call every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Just dial 360-602-2931. That's 360-602-2931. Also, please join us immediately after worship today for intercessory prayer at the front of the sanctuary. The church that prays together stays together. Introducing God and Hoops with NCAA D1, WNBA, and Team USA basketball player, Coach Lisa C. Willis. Sign up for the six-week basketball academy that bridges biblical principle and basketball skills. Your child will get practical steps to draw them closer to God and be prepared for the soon return of Jesus Christ. Spots are limited, so hurry and register online today at lisacwillis.com slash God and Hoops. Our citywide campaign, Prophecies of Hope, begins on August 13th and we need your help. Get updates and sign up to participate. Just text ORM Info to 77411 today. Again, that's ORM Info to 77411 or call our church office and let us know that you are ready to help. Hello Sharon SDA Church. My name is Dr. Tanya Lambert and I've been invited to your church to host a free four day seminar geared towards women's health. It will be held between June 25th and July 16th between 3 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. We'll be discussing the relationship between mental health issues, in particular depression and anxiety, which is at an all time high right now among women and its relationship to PCOS, fibroids, and endometriosis. I will be sharing with you God's healing methods, including diet, lifestyle, and nutrition, and how you can use it effectively to reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety and heal from PCOS, fibroids, and endometriosis. Plus men, you are welcome to attend this session as well, as this information can help the women in your lives to heal. So I look forward to seeing you all on June 25th. You don't wanna miss this event. God bless. Get connected with women engaging women and discover a sisterhood destined for eternity. Text Sharon Women to 77411. That's Sharon Women to 77411 to get involved today. Youth Ministries is having another meetup. This time we're going to Oaks Park where the fun never ends. Attractions include amusement rides, mini golf, games, and a roller rink. Tickets for amusement rides will be provided for youth ages 18 and under. It's fun for the entire family. Text YM Info to 77411 for details. Again, that's YM Info to 77411. Remember, you can submit your announcements to our church office or email them to OFFICE at SharonSDA.net by Thursday of each week. Once again, that's office at SharonSDA.net. Or you can call our church office. Thank you for listening. And happy Sabbath.
those of you here in the audience, those of you watching online, I don't know your personal reason of why you're here today. It could be to speak to someone you haven't seen in a while. It could be to listen to a word, to hear music, here for the baptism. But what I do want the reason in your heart is to let the Holy Spirit move through you on this here Sabbath and be willing and ready to invite him in to listen to what he has for you. Your smile on your face given to somebody else may be that extra boost that somebody needed for this here today. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Sharon Church. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear God, we thank you for another Sabbath. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you for allowing us the opportunity to worship in spirit and in truth. God, I ask at this time that you be with those watching online and those here in this service, as well as those on their way. Let us be receptive to what you have for us on today. In your name we pray, amen. All right, it is now time for praise and the worship. While we're getting ready for praise and worship, one announcement that I will make is when we are waiting for service to start, there are quite a few announcements that you don't want to miss out on that are on the screen. So make sure that you do pay attention to those announcements because there's amazing things happening at Sharon Church. And we need your support to be able to do that, as well as those of you who may be in the audience or online who are interested in singing. Linda Foxworth is the individual to speak with, because you don't want to lose out on your opportunity on a talent that you may have. A talent that you may have. Amen. You don't want to lose those talents. So we all have no. gifts and talents for God. Praise and worship is a ministry for me, and I'm excited to be able to do that. Testing, and I just testing. ask that you invite the spirit of the Lord testing. into your heart as we worship. I have a new song for you today, and it is titled, I've Got Favor. That God is blessing us over and over and over again. Let's do a mic check. It seems like there's some mics that are not on. Fully. Just. Blessing me, he keeps on blessing me. 
says it over and over and over and, yeah. over and over. Think about it. All of us are God's favorite. Amen. Like, have you ever been wanting to be somebody's favorite? Like, no, you're really God's favorite. For you to be an individual, but you are God's favorite. And he keeps on blessing us over and over. We love to call his name. Today I'm doing some of my favorite songs. Because I'm telling you, when I get up here, it's not about you. I, I'm from a sincere heart. When I first started doing praise and worship, it was. I would get nervous. I would get scared. I would get sad. I would get defeated because I would see some of the faces in the audience. And I didn't know what was going on all the time, but I was like, you know what, God? It's not about the audience. It's about me and you. It is a personal relationship that I have. And when I'm on this stage, I take it seriously. It is not for show. And I want that for anybody who's in ministry. It's not about me. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for me. Do it because you want to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because I can't get you into heaven. We're going to the same heaven, but I can't get you there. So you have to be able to worship and use your gifts. If you haven't used your gifts and talents in the last 10 years, I need you. I'm calling you out. Step your game up. Because the time is coming. God is not playing. And if you see what's going on in the news and the media, we serve a king and his name is great. And we need to call on the name of Jesus. So the time is now for you to use your gifts and talents and see what God can do through you. Move people. Last week he said, don't get stuck in the mud. Don't get stuck in the mud. Move, move past it and use that gift. Your great name. We love to call your name.
shepherd. He goes before me. He's a defender behind me. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing and my cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. I won't fear.
that you are all we need. So we can say hallelujah with confidence. We can praise his holy name with confidence because he is going to take care of whatever it is. Oh, he may not do it the way we think it should be done. But he knows best, he knows all, and he will take care of us. So I ask you today, if you're battling health, he's the great physician. If you're battling race issues, we're all his children. And he will not let anything happen to us. If you're battling social issues, problems on your job, just know that he placed you there. And what is for you will be for you. So I lift up those who are battling health. I lift up those who are battling racial issues, this coronavirus. running rampant, and each time there's another variant, but oh God, you know, and you're going to take care of it. Help us just to trust and be faithful and do our part. Those who are looking to you, looking for you, May they find you. If those who are looking for a church home, Sharon, we're here. And may those who come across the threshold of this church see you before they see anything else. Just know that if there's problems in your home, love conquers all. We have to look to you, Lord. We have to trust in you, and we have to do it completely. Help us. Help our unbelief, Lord. And dear Heavenly Father, when it's all said and done, I ask that you give us a home, because this earth is not our home. This is not our home. Father, forgive us of our sin. Help us to stand when we don't know what else to do, just stand. Where there is weakness, Father, may we find there is strength in you. Those who are poor, they are rich in you. We have celebrated Juneteenth, Independence from Slavery, and this coming Monday we will celebrate the 4th of July, which is the independence. But we have independence from slavery, independence of this country from you, from the very beginning, before we were ever formed in a womb, because you took it all to the cross, Lord. You took it all to the cross and it's been taken care of. Thank you for your many blessings. Lord Jesus, may we continue to praise and lift you up. Because you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for watching out for us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for restoring us. And Father, thank you that one day, one day, we will have a home with you. And Father, I lift up the baptismal candidates today and those who are coming in the profession of faith. Let them know that this is the best decision that they will ever make choosing you, Father, because you are all we need. Thank you, Lord. Glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your goodness and your glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
it wasn't for the Lord, he will take you and he will bring you back. He took me to the desert. Lord Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. And I was fighting because I didn't want to go. But he told me, he said, hey, I will take you. I will take care of you. And I will bring you back. That is how I stand before you today. A lot didn't make it back. But I am here and I ask that he use me to tell others about the glory and his goodness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. May you be glorified. Whatever it is, you give it to him and he will take care of it. In your name I pray this thing. Amen.
without ceasing. Today, we get to celebrate individuals giving their life to Christ. That is because of prayer. Continue to pray. It has been an honor and a blessing to serve this church. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Let the church say amen. We're excited today. Our hearts are also sad today because um, at some point, I guess, we do have to let you go. But we don't want to. We protested. We prayed about it. But I guess we have to let you go. Uh, real quick, I want to acknowledge our guests and our visitors here today. We have with us today Mr. Alexander Shambry. If you raise your hand, let us recognize you. Praise God. Thank you so much for coming by and visiting with us today. We have with us also Nia. Uh, now, I'm, I'm make sure I get this name straight. Uh, Humana Ona. Oh, no. Did I, did I mess it up too badly? Well, Nia, if you could just raise your hand. She's in the balcony. Okay, praise God. So glad that you're here with us today. Praise God. All of our guests that are online, you can go ahead and, and press that button on sharingsda.net. Press the connect button and let us know that you're with us today. If you want to just simply drop a comment, let us know that you're with us today. That'll be great. Uh, for those who uh, we've had um, a great time over the last couple of weeks, we, de uh, we developed something called the Bible Cafe, and the Lord has truly blessed. We uh, registered about 50 people, um, over 50 people who were registered. Uh, 20 people came to the class, 11 graduated, and today we have the fruits of the labor. Amen for that. <laughs> Praising God for people who are taking their stand for Christ. So um, continue to pray for us as we continue to be moved by the Holy Spirit. And um, We'll get into the word because we've got a long day today. We've got uh, Dr. Tanya Lambert uh, that's going to do a presentation. I know that the flyer says 3 o'clock. I know that the announcement said 3 o'clock, but I'm going to tell you right now it's at 2 o'clock. Uh, we did a, a study last week, and everybody agreed that if we could have had it just a little bit earlier, um, they, they felt that things would have been a little bit better for them, even though the information was amazing. So what we want to do, just move that to 2 o'clock and um, get you guys um, in and out. And uh, let's go to the Word of God today as we look at the book, of, um, the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, real quick. Just one little verse here. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. We stand together as we read the Word of God. We look here, Exodus chapter 14, verse number 15. Welcome to all of our visitors online as well. Um, this is what the word of God says, declares. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. I'll read it one more time. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. If you bear with us for a little while, they wanted to speak to you on a simple subject entitled, Get Moving. Get Moving. Dear Lord, we thank you today 
for all that you've done for us. We pray now, Lord, that your spirit will continue to lead and guide us as we seek your favor and seek your face. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As you take your seat, declare to yourself, I'm going to keep on moving. I'm going to keep on moving. I believe in the power of prayer. I myself am a product of prayer. For 13 years, my mother prayed for me. Who knows there's nothing like a mother's prayer. Prayed for me. And she did it until I decided to give my life to Jesus, and now she's still praying for me. Come on, say amen. So I'm sure that you would agree with me that prayer is essential to the Christian experience. It could be said that Christian, a Christian without prayer is like a body without breath. Prayer is so important that the Apostle Paul teaches us in 1 Thessalonians 5 to pray without ceasing. Yet when I read this pericope in Exodus, God himself tells Moses to stop talking and start walking. Oh, that was an amen moment right there. See, there comes a time in our Christian experience where we must activate our faith and live out the same gospel that we preach to everybody else. At some point in our lives, we have to stop talking about it and actually be about it. Who says amen to that? See, there comes a time in our Christian experience, when, when, in our Christian journey, when we have to activate our faith beyond our feelings. Moses felt as if he was trapped in an impossible place. Moses felt as, he, as, if, as if he was stuck in a rut. Moses felt as if he uh, 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 had, had hit a roadblock in his life. He had done everything he was supposed to do. He followed the voice of God to, uh, 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 to lead the people of God. So how is it that he finds himself in an impossible situation while following a God with whom all things are possible? Anybody ever felt like that? When you know for a fact that you heard the voice of God, when you know for a fact that God told you to go right and you went right, and then God told you to go left, and you went left, and now it seems like you're stuck in a situation, stuck in a particular place. I've been there before. As a, a, a travel agent mapping the quickest route to Israel would have steered Moses to the caravan road that parallels the Mediterranean coastline. But archaeologists have confirmed that Egyptian forts guarded that road. The Bible says that God didn't want the fleeing refugees to fight any battles that soon. Oh, I believe that's the word for somebody today. See, your, your, your strategy session and, and, and all of your vision charts, you set your path and you had a desired result in mind, and you wanted to get there as fast as possible, and you're wondering why nothing is working. The plan was carefully plotted, but somehow, some way, you find yourself where you are right now, stuck between frustration and fear, stuck between wondering when it's going to happen and worrying if it's ever going to happen at all. I stopped by here today to encourage you, though, that it's taking a long time because you've been rerouted. You're not where you think you should be right now because your GPS coordinates have been recalculated. See, the master of the universe is still ordering your steps even when you think you're in the wrong place or you feel like you're not going anywhere fast. God knows the path that you want to take. He knows that. But did you know that God has already orchestrated a path just for you. You, had, you got the right degrees. You aligned yourself with the right people. You made the right partnerships. You planned your work and you worked your plan. And I believe Babby, Ma uh, Babby Mason said it right when she wrote these words to this song. Like to hear, here it go. God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. When you don't understand and can't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. I think she got that right. 
God is so intimately inclined towards us, and you guys hear me say this all the time, that God knows the hair on your head, but not just that you have 999, not just that you have 99 and those who have just the nine and those who have none. God knows that, but God knows which one is number nine. So I su suggest to you today that if you trust the chair that's holding you right now, or you trust the floor that's holding you right now, then why not trust the one who knows you and holds you? Yeah. See, God has a perfect plan for you. God has a perfect purpose for you. God has a perfect path just for you. So be not dismayed if it feels like you're being delayed. Just understand that your delay is not a denial from God. Just trust God because God knows that there are some battles you are not prepared to fight. See, your plan that you thought was perfect actually has way too many holes in it. You haven't thought it all the way out and all the way through, so God had to pick up the mantle and start doing some thinking for you. <laughs> so God redirected you and is taking you the long way around, and it may seem like it's the long way, but I promise you it's the safest way. Can you imagine that? It should have only took them just a little while to get to the promised land. But God knew that there were some people that were more cunning, more devious than they were, and they were not prepared for the fight. Ain't God good? You think you're going through something now. What if God had not redirected your path? Imagine the stuff that you'd have to deal with. So Moses turns south and taking one of the roads, let's travel a mysterious hovering pillar guides the Israelites. It's a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. I, I want to stop right there because it appears that you, you missed your shout moment one more time. Mm. See that right there was good. That was good right there. Let me tell you why. Although the way God was leading them didn't have enemies that they would have to fight, understand that it did not mean that the way that they were going was laced with roses, orchids, and lilies. Oh no, there were still dangers that they would still have to survive. You may not have to face that enemy, but you still got to face something in your lifetime. I love this because, see, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this or not, or you're aware, but it's hot in the desert during the daytime. Scientists suggest that, that, that the desert can act like a microwave oven because there's no insulation. The heat from the sun radiates down, then it reflects off the sand, which means that you're getting cooked from the top and the bottom and nobody has to turn you over. So God provided insulation through a pillar of cloud by day to do what? To block Oh, there it is, the heat. And I believe that God is still providing his children insulation, not so much from the heat, but I believe that God is blocking some stuff right now. God is blocking your haters. I heard somewhere that haters are going to hate, but you don't have to engage. Let them do what they do and just sit back and watch God do what God does. See, the psalmist declares that God will prepare a table before you <laughs> in the presence of your enemies. So when your haters surround you, there is no need to fret or fear. Why, preacher? Because there are, that you're right there in a perfect place to see what God is about to do in your life. This is why I just stopped blocking people on my page. Mm -mm. I don't even block them no more. Because I began to feel as if I was blocking my table that God was preparing for me. Oh, yeah. And the same way that they ran their mouths about me behind my back, it's going to be the same way that they're going to watch me place my feet right under this table. Oh, yeah. They're going to they gonna, they gonna watch me get this blessing. Uh-huh. See, understand this. They thought that, you, that, 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 that they had a ringside seat to see you get defeated in battle. But they're actually going to end up with a front row seat to your victory celebration. Who says amen to that? 
Oh, yeah. But just like the pillar of cloud by day provided protection, the pillar of fire by night also provided protection. See, the desert is hot in the daytime, but it can get cold at night because, once again, there's no insulation. See, the pillar of fire it kept them warm at night, and it also illuminated the night so it could ward off any predators that lurked in the darkness of the night. Just like God blocks the haters, he's also going to block the predators. Maybe y'all ain't got nothing going on in your life. Maybe this word is just for me today because I'm excited about it because I understand that predators are those things or those people who are strategically placed in your life to devour you. They are out to destroy you. I, I'm so glad, though, that Jesus sets the record straight in John 10.10 10, when he said that the enemy comes to do nothing. Oh, I wish that God's people would just read that. He came with a nice smile, but the Bible said he came to do nothing. She came with all the curves and with everything you thought you wanted. But the Bible said that she came to do nothing but to steal, kill, and destroy. But yet I have come that they may have what, everybody? Life, and not just life. He said, I'm going to give it to you in the overflow. Living life in the abundance. I love living life in the abundance. The story is told about a lady in New York. And during that time, there was this guy, this, this mugger, and, and, and what he would do is he would find people and rob them and assault them. But this lady, in order to get to the grocery store, she had to walk through an alley. This particular day, it was payday, so she, her pocketbook was full, and she had a handful of groceries, so she was easy picking. She nervously walked through the alley. And as she nervously walked through the alley, guess what happened? Nothing. She got up to her doorstep and she was shaking so much she could barely get the key in the lock. She got the key in the lock, opened the door, got home and put up her groceries and relaxed for a little bit and turned on the TV. 30 minutes later, she sees an active crime scene that's right there on her street. Now she's there with the crime scene. She sees it. She notices that it's on her street. She runs outside. As the reporter is talking to the police officer, the police officer said, we finally got the guy. He's a serial mugger. He's been doing this for months. She runs up to the officer and says, officer, can I please just ask him a question? The officer obliges her and lets her ask a question. And she said, sir, I literally just walked down this alley. And why is it? that you didn't mug me. You know what he said? He said, I didn't mug you because of that man that was walking with you. Oh, yeah, I feel it in my spirit right now because, see, somebody ought to give God some glory up in here right now because you need to understand there's some stuff that you should have gone through. There's some things that you should have happened to you, but that didn't happen to you because God was walking with you. You may not have seen him, but the enemy saw him and left you alone. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. Back to our story. Meanwhile, Pharaoh got upset and he changed his mind. I love that right there because even when man changes his mind, God does not have to budge. <laughs> they, they, they may have changed their mind about hiring you, but God still got you. They may have changed their mind about loving you, but God still loves you. He, he wants all of his slaves back, so, so he sends his chariots to get them. As the Egyptian army advances, the heavenly the, the pillar moves behind the crowd of fleeing Israelites and stops the Egyptians. I want to stop right there just for a second. Because God was leading them to a path of blessing. But God had to stop doing what he's doing for us, the blessing, and come all the way back, get in front of them, because they were not looking at their blessing, they were looking at their fears. Oh, you missed it. 
I wonder how many of us delay our Red Sea moment because we're so busy looking at our fear as opposed to keep watching what God is doing. But the Israelites, they had no place to go. They are blocked by a large body of water, and the people of God were overtaken by fear and frustration, and they allowed paranoia to prevent them from praising. So listen closely, because I want to share something with you. If you are a leader in any capacity, on your job, wherever you are, if you're a leader, and your people are complaining, if you are married and your spouse is complaining, if you are a parent and your kids are complaining, understand that you got to do something at some point. The best thing you can do is to help them replace their complaints with confidence. But not confidence in you, but confidence in God and what God is doing. They need to know that no matter what it looks like, if you're following Jesus, then you are in the perfect place for a miracle. They began to complain to Moses, and then Moses began to complain to God. You know how we do it. We call it prayer. But <laughs> let something go wrong. <laughs> Get a larger list of stuff that we want God to do, and amen. And this is what, what happens. I understand that are we not supposed to take all our burdens to Jesus anyway? That, that, that's the Bible. But understand, saints, that there are some of the burdens that we pick up are not our burdens to carry at all. Amen, Walls. When we take care of God's business, trust and believe that God is always faithful to take care of our business. Once again, if you're following Jesus, then you are in the perfect place for a miracle. God had already worked miracles uh, uh, while they were in Egypt. But who knows that you can't live off yesterday's miracles? God has not run out of blessings. Just like he provided for them yesterday, God is ready to provide for them today. And I think that at some point, we ought to pick up what I call a Psalm 27 praise. That's when a private declaration turns into a public praise. David declared that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? David declared that the Lord is my strength of my life, or whom shall I be afraid? So who's going to pay the bill? Where is show ain't going to pay it? So I want you to pick up the Psalm 27 praise and just simply say, the Lord is. Who's going to get me out of this mess I got myself in? They can't help me, but guess what? The Lord is. Y'all ain't with me yet. Who's going to help me with this diagnosis? The medicine may not work. The medicine has stopped working. I don't have money for the medicine anymore, but I read somewhere that the Lord is. If there's a witness in this place today, let me know that you understand that the Lord is. Whatever it is that you need, the Lord is. So if you're stuck between fear and frustration today because things are not moving in the direction you think they should, I want to encourage you today to just keep moving. If you feel as if you're, you're stuck and no one understands what you're going through, I want to encourage you today to just keep moving. If you feel as if things are not moving as fast as you hoped that they would, don't stop right there. Don't stop hoping. I just want to encourage you today to just keep moving. This is why I use my Jack faith. I know people say, you don't know Jack. Well, if you don't know Jack, I want to introduce you to him today. Is that OK? See, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, they, 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 I met Jack for the very first time. He came in, 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 in one of those enclosed boxes. The top of the box could not simply be removed, and Jack was surrounded by his circumstances. There was trouble front, back, and side to side. Now, somebody going to say amen on that one because they know the song. You ain't been saved that long. Come on, work with me now. So Jack was surrounded by his circumstances, and Jack was in a dark place. Jack was in a, in a deep hole, and the only way to see Jack was to twist the little crank on the side. That's the only way you could see Jack. And see, when Jack would finally pop up, you'll see this huge smile 
on Jack's face. And I learned two lessons from Jack. That's why I call him a Jack praise. Because even though you would push Jack back in the box, you knew that Jack was still down there smiling. <laughs> Jack didn't change his disposition just because of his position. Jack just kept on smiling even though he was in the deep, dark place. But I want to help you understand something. Even though he was in a box, Jack had a covering. Ooh, you missed your shout moment right there. He had a covering. And what I love about this covering, a regular human just couldn't open it. You just couldn't go there and open the covering. You had to apply pressure. You had to do that crank thing. And when you had enough pressure on the inside of the circumstances, when God places pressure on your circumstances, I want you to be just like Jack and just pop up out of that box with a smile on your face. The same smile that you had when you were down in depression, I want you to pop up with a smile. The same smile you had when you were brokenhearted, I want you to pop up with a smile. That's my Jack kind of faith. And I tell you what, as I get ready to take my seat, what I love about this keep moving, do you understand? Moses felt as if life was over. He felt as if there was no chance, there was no way for anything to happen. Have you ever been there? You didn't know how it was going to happen. You didn't know if it was going to, you didn't know how, you didn't even see a way that it could happen. Mm. Jesus just said it like this, with man it is impossible. <laughs> but with God, all things are possible. And I love it because God said, man, why are you here talking to me about this? I didn't change my mind about blessing you. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it's not already is. Just because you're in a deep, dark place right now, just because you're in your Red Sea moment, if God has already given you a promise, if God had already told you to go that way, if God had already told you to quit that job, if God had already told you to leave that relationship, if God had already told you what to do, don't be worried because you can't see how you're going to manage by yourself. Don't be worried because you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Don't be worried about any of that because the same God that supplied a way of escape for them will supply a way of escape for you. God said to Moses, why do you keep talking to me about this? Like you're going to change my mind because you're uncomfortable. I don't know where we get this notion that when you become a Christian, everything has to be comfortable for us. Do you realize what you signed up for? <laughs> Apparently not. But I tell you what, I'd rather sign up for this and have a covering like Jack than to be out there with no covering. I'd much rather be on this side of the coin. So whoever you are today, Here's my appeal to you. Do you have the covering that you need to take your life to the next level? Are you going to subscribe to your situation being so bad that it cannot be changed? Are you going to spend time arguing with God, trying to tell God what's going on like he doesn't already know? Because he's already told you what he wants you to do. But because we don't see a way, we stop walking. Because we don't see how it's going to happen. See, this is something that's so amazing. And I love this. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for reminding me about this. They would have to take the Ark of the Covenant, which had the Shekinah glory in it. The priest would have to take it. And what would happen is nothing would happen until the priest would step in the water. Not one, but when the first two stepped in the water, they move out of the way, then the second two step in the water, and then things start to happen. Why? 
not only does, it, does God have to lead, not only do you have to follow God's leading, but you got to be all the way in. You got to be all the way in. And it was only when they got all the way in with God that things started to move in their lives. The water did not move until they got all the way in. Even on the Jordan, go back and read it. When they tried to cross the Jordan, nothing moved until they were all the way in with God. Are you all the way in with God today? Or are you playing the game on the bank? In a river. <laughs> so, you know, you play that game right, at some point, somebody going to call in the river, you're going to be on the bank. At some point in your life, you got to be willing to go all in with God. It's going to look crazy. We talked about that the last time we were together. It's, some stuff looks crazy. But let God be God. Let God direct your path. Lead not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, in your bank account, acknowledge him. In your relationship, acknowledge him. On your job, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. You're going to have some challenges come up in your life. You're going to have some things that happen in your life. But I want to celebrate with you right now that if ever you decide that you want to go all the way with God, and put your foot in this water all the way in, you're going to see some stuff start moving in your life. People are going to look at you crazy. Can you imagine how Pharaoh thought he had them? Like, they, they over by the Red Sea. They got wilderness on one side. They got rugged terrain on the other side. They sitting ducks. But all of a sudden, God made a way out of no way. It may seem like it's the long way around. It may even seem like it's the wrong way around. But I promise you, as long as you're following the voice of Jesus Christ, as long as you follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit, you can never go wrong. So here's my call real quick, because we got to get dressed. Here's my call real quick. Those of you today, we see the pool here, we see the water here is ready. Are you ready? Are you ready to go all the way today? Are you ready to go all the way? Well, Pastor, I didn't come prepared. Well, today, salvation has come to your house. Who knows if you will make, I'm not one of those brimstone preachers, fire and brimstone preachers, but who knows if you'll make it back to next week? But Pastor, I don't have my life together. That's the point. The first step of getting your life together. Yeah, that's how it works. When you give your life over to Christ, when you come and you die with Jesus in the water of the grave, you come back up. It's a brand new lease on life. Troubles are not going to go away, but he did say that he will keep you. in perfect peace. Not just a little peace. Not until the high wears off. Not even with a hangover. Not even with bad habits. Doesn't even cost you anything. No prescription needed. He said he'll keep you. But he also said that he'll give you peace that surpasses. <laughs> so when, when, when things are going crazy in your life and people are used to you going off, but you're sitting there smiling, oh, they, she crazy. He didn't he let the, crackers, uh, uh, the cheese slip off his cracker. But you had perfect peace. Trouble is going to happen. But things will be different in your life. You'll see things different. You react to things differently. Now, am I saying that once you go down and you come right back up, everything's going to change? No, it's a journey. 
Each day with Jesus gets sweeter and sweeter. Each day gets better and better. Better and better. But pastor, I've been baptized already. Well, I've been baptized three times. Why? Because I learned some new stuff. And this time I meant it. Not saying I went in not thinking that I meant it, but this time I had a real relationship with Jesus. And I was intent on developing that relationship. So am I perfect because he keeps me in perfect peace? Not at all. I still make mistakes. I still even do some stuff on purpose. But it's something about the grace of God that helps me to understand, Papa, I'm sorry. When my little kids walk, walk up to me, and they know they didn't did something. Something about them eyes. They look at me. I know not to look at them because I, I need them to be in trouble. But if ever they can lock in with me, grace and mercy comes before the wrath. Wrath was intended. Oh, you about to get it. And you about to get it good. But then grace and mercy locked in. That is what's happening right now. One day there will be the wrath of God poured out. As we say back in the day, with no chaser, no mixer. Straight. I was talking to vernacular that they know. <laughs> Straight up, no chaser. And nobody will be able to quench the wrath at, the, at that moment. Now wrath is coming, because God doesn't like the stuff that we're doing. Wrath is coming, but that grace and mercy gets there first. And we lock in with the Father and say, Lord, I'm so sorry about what I did. Please forgive me. I'm going to make this call because I know there's somebody that's here. There's some people that are here. You didn't expect to see this today. You didn't expect to make that move today, but I'm going to call you anyway. And right now, I want all heads bowed, all eyes are closed because you're praying. And I need you to talk to God for a quick second. Lord, what do you want me to do today? Father, I didn't bring a change of clothes. God said, I got you. You realize that he made the day so that it's not so cold that you can't drive home in wet garments. It's not so hot that your clothes will dry up on you and make it real sticky. Perfect day to get in the water. But we're also not going to make you get in the water with your clothes on. We're going to let you get in the water with a nice white robe. Why preachers there a white robe? Because it represents the robe that God has for you. And that white robe is made up of Christ's righteousness. Can I tell you what's happening at this moment as you're making a decision? There's something called the Lamb's Book of Life. In that Lamb's Book of Life, there will be your name and your mistakes and your sins, or it will be your name and Christ's righteousness. The challenge is, choose you this day which one you want in the Lamb's Book of Life. Nobody's going to get out of here unscathed. Everybody's going to have to make this decision one day. Either you want your sins to be removed or you want your sins to remain. So my first thing to you today is those of you who want your sins, even if you're online, just write in the comments, 
if you want your sins to be blotted out in your name and Christ's righteousness written in the Lamb's book of life, just simply raise your hand. Just simply raise your hand wherever you are. That's what you want. That's your desire. God sees. God sees you. God sees you. We've already discussed this already because <laughs> don't think that you're the only sinner up in this piece. Because the Bible has declared that all have sinned and come short of his glory. That means all, all, including you, including you who are online, all. And this is why we need a savior. So the first call is for those people who recognize that they need a savior. We have people here today that have signed their, their, their uh, candidate information, uh, information, and we got some more of these forms handy. Step one is to recognize that you need a Savior, because if you don't realize that you need a Savior, you, <laughs> there's nothing God can do for you. Now for those who recognize that they need a Savior, this call is for those who have already given their lives to Christ, but something's not right. Something's not right. Pastor, you asking me to do confessional? No. I don't want to know what you did. But you know what you did last summer. You know what you did last night. The thing I love about God is that He's not coming. Well, he didn't come here so that he could <clears throat> punish us. He came here so that he could save us. So those of us who feel as if we've been on the, uh, on, the, on the way with Christ and we had a little hiccup, and today we want to just stand before God and ask for his grace and mercy. If that's you, I just simply want you to just slip your hand up real quick. That's you. Praise God. Praise God for you. 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 Now we have two, 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 two categories here. Those of us who are in need of a Savior. Those of us who have encountered the Savior, but we just still need him to work on us, work with us, work inside of us. You're in a perfect place for a miracle right now. Step one, knowing that we need a Savior. Step two is accepting the gift of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what everybody? Eternal life. If you want eternal life, just so you can see your hand. Raise your hand if you want eternal life. Some people here don't want nothing. So we're going to stop talking to you. We're going to talk to those who are fit in those categories. You want eternal life. You know you need a Savior. So today, here's the big one. If you've already been baptized and you feel this urge, the Holy Ghost working with you, and you want to just show God that you're serious about what it is, your commitment with him, doesn't mean that you're going to get it right tomorrow. Doesn't mean you're going to get it right tonight. But you're committed to allowing Jesus to work in your life. I'm going to make a call right now for those who've been baptized and you want to just jump in this word again and be rebaptized today as a sign that, Lord, I want to follow you all the way. And I'm serious about it, as serious as I can be about it. Lord, I'm not perfect, but I know I need a clean slate. If that's you, let me see your hand today. If that's you, let me see your hand today. Praise God. Praise God for you. Praise God for you. Praise God for you. Is there another one? Is there another one? This is not an indictment. This is not an indictment. As a matter of fact, I don't believe 
I don't, I don't tell people that God is sending you a warning. I tell people God is sending you a love letter. God's not sending you a warning. He's sending you a wooing. He wants to woo you to him. Praise God for rebaptism. Now, for those of you, it's your very first time you want to get baptized. Well, Pastor, I'm not ready. Let me ask you a question. When will you be ready? When will you be ready? When will you be ready? If not now, then when? Pastor, I got some stuff I got to get straight in my life. First step, baptism, then the Holy Spirit comes and begins to work with you. Who are you today? If you're interested in getting that baptism done, that baptism, that baptism done today, why don't you simply raise your hand? I know you didn't come prepared for it, but we came prepared for you. We are ready for you today. Who are you? Raise your hand real quick. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Those of you online who are making decisions right now, just want you to go to sharingsda.net. Go there and hit the uh, connect button. And I want you to just put in baptism. And we'll get that done for you. If you're not here in the state of Oregon, if you're not in, in Portland, we'll work with the local congregation wherever you are to make sure that that happens for you. That's the great thing about being part of a worldwide organization. Anywhere you are in this world, we can make that happen for you. So right now as we prepare our hearts, let us pray. Father, I thank you for the souls that have given their lives to you today. Those who have already said that they want to be saved. They know we stand in need, O oh Lord. We know that we are in need of a Savior. We know, O oh Lord, so we're taking this journey together. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Anoint this word, O oh Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Change it from its common use to its spiritual use. That they that, that the lives that go in will be changed henceforth and forever. We thank you for the victory through Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Today, we have Those who, um, Sister uh, Markeith, uh, where are you? Right there. All right, Ra raise your hand real quick. This is Sister Markeith. So um, all of the females who um, are ready for baptism today, I want you to see this young lady right here. As we get dressed, raise your hand one more time so everybody can see you. Those people in the balcony can see you. What, where do you want them to meet you? Right over here on this side, okay. Right over on this side by the piano. If you can come quickly, if you're a female, I want you to do that. If you can come quickly. I know that we have some people that are in um, the COVID protocol, and this is a, a different day that we live in, and we can plan a pretty picnic, but we can't predict the weather. So today... We also have some people who have decided that they wanted to join our fellowship by profession of faith. So I want to call those names out, and while we're doing that, we want to accept those uh, people into our fellowship through profession of faith. They have been baptized before. And they want to become part of our fellowship here. 
We have Sister Phyllis Forbes. We have Brother Richard Grant. We have Marlena Schaefer, Schaefer, that's her name, Marlene Schaefer, that's her name, joining us today with Profession of Faith as well, and for those people who are in the um, COVID protocol, we'll set another date for them, I understand that we would have loved to have had them here today, but I appreciate the safety, you know, so we'll plan another day to do that. For, so I want to do two things. I will read the commitments. The commitments that we have. The baptismal vows, but as, those, as they, they're getting dressed... I gotta go get dressed too. So we'll we'll do the baptismal vows when they come back out. But right now, I wanted to um, accept the motion for those people who have decided to join our fellowship by profession of faith. Is there a second to that motion? All right. All in favor? And aye. Any opposed? Same sign. It's carried. So praise God for that. For the profession of faith. And once again, we do have some other people here. Look at all these cars that we have. But because of COVID, it's better safe than sorry. So with that being said, can we um, get a few songs? And I'll go get changed real quick.
since I laid my burdens down. I haven't seen it in a long time. You guys remember when we used to have AY? Like, you'd be at church all day, and then we'd have a potluck downstairs, a dinner downstairs, then we would come back for AY, and then it would be a gym night, all the things, the tradition. There's some things we can still bring back. So let's sing glory, glory. Stop. 
is your opportunity to sing that song. Come on, come on. Anybody? You need to stand up and stretch. It's been a while. How about you get up and stretch for a little bit? It is good. No, seriously, I'm an educator. Stand up. Because <laughs> you've been sitting for a while, and it's good to actually move, to just stretch a little bit because we get lost sometimes and we get tired. So you can sit, exhale, inhale, greet somebody. Actually, greet somebody. Oh, everybody. Jesus and me loves the Jesus and you. That's it. So you can see somebody and give them a smile. If you want to sit back down, that's good. But it is good to get some movement flowing because you've been sitting for the last two hours. When it comes to education, when it come, when um, lecture is actually the least effective way to educate someone. It is about interacting. So when we're talking, when we're smiling, when we're speaking, using different methods. And I just love to see all the children in the audience right now. Like, it's great to see all the different ages because they're watching, they're learning, they're listening what it means to praise and serve God. They're learning that example all the way. I think the youngest in here is a year old. Actually, almost. How old is 11 months? Yeah, almost. Almost one year. So it is amazing to be able to see that. Another selection audience. What do we have today? Any requests? Nobody? Take I was going to wait till they came so we could take them to the water. That's, I, I guess that's in my back pocket right now. I'm waiting for that. <laughs> uh, soon and very soon.
those in the audience that have a testimony that they would like to share at this time. Anybody? Something that they would like to share about the goodness of God. You have a song? Oh, I got a song, yes. I may never march in the infantry, that one? No. Which one is I in the Lord's army? Is it? <laughs> is it the kids? Is it the one? I may never march in the infantry. No? Okay. Tell me. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. <laughs> soldiers in the army. We are soldiers in the army. We have to fight, although we have to die. We have to hold up the blood-stained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. All right, y'all ready? All the, all the children, like 12 and under, you want to stand with me and sing it? See, that means that's how long we have in the AY. Y'all don't even know these songs, but that's okay. Here we go. We are soldiers in the army, we have to fight, although we have to die, we have to hold, we have to hold up the bloodstained banner, we have to hold it up until we die, we are soldiers, we are soldiers in the army, we have to fight, although we have to die, we have to hold, we have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. Well, my mother, she was a soldier. She had her hand on the gospel plow. But one day she got old, she couldn't fight anymore. She said, stand up and fight anyhow. Oh, we are soldiers in the army. In the army. We have to fight. We have to fight. Although we have to die, we have to hold, we have to hold up the blood stain. We have to hold, we have to hold it up until we die. Well, my father, he was a soldier. He had his hand on the gospel pile. But one day he got old, he couldn't fight anymore. He said, stand up and fight in the Oh, we are soldiers in the army. In the army. We have to fight. We have to fight. Oh, although we have to die, we have to hold. We have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. Thank y'all so much for that rousing rendition. <laughs> Praise God for that. Today, and um, I really, well, I guess that's the world in which we live. We got to take precautions for COVID, things of that nature. So apparently, 
a couple of our um, people were not here today due to, um, so, but we are going to celebrate the ones who are here. We're going to do that. And so, uh, let's see, uh, Clements, Muhaz, we've got some questions for you. So would you stand for me, please? There's three basic questions. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, and do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? Yes. Amen. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Yes. Amen. The last one, do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ? to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithe and offering, and life of service. Yes. Amen. Praise God for that. You guys heard the examination, and we will uh, open the floor for a motion to accept uh, Clements as one of our fellowship members. Is there such a motion? So move there a second. All in favor, aye. aye. Praise God. Amen. We won't even ask if there are anyone who doesn't. Shame on you if you did. So praise God for that. So what we're going to do is have a word of prayer with you real quick. Father, you've heard the voice in the heart of this young lady praying, Father, that you would bless her now and her family. May she be used as a light wherever she goes to bring joy of Jesus to those who need a Savior. We thank you, Lord, and may our church be a place where she can foster a relationship with you through your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name, amen. In a world that's constantly changing, it's a blessing and a comfort to know that God is still in control and that he is still touching the lives of people everywhere. Here at Sharon, we are committed to reaching all people with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and responding to the needs in our community and beyond. We work diligently to ensure that you are blessed through our preaching, teaching, music, 
children's, youth, and community ministries, we praise God that we have been able to provide weekly food giveaways, free COVID-19 test help during disasters, healthy food alternatives through our Sharon Church community service, our online support through Grief Share and Divorce Care Ministries, and daily prayer through our prayer ministry, just to name a few. But there is so much more that God is calling us to do, and we need your help as people return to worship in person. With your prayers and support, we can continue to create additional online content to reach people with the good news and deliver this message of hope to Portland and beyond. You can mail your gifts to the church at 5209 Northeast 22nd Avenue, Portland, Oregon, 97211. You can share your gifts online through our church website at SharonSDA.net or through Cash App, dollar sign Sharon Church PDX. May God continue to bless you as we engage in meaningful, relevant, and life-changing ministry here at Sharon, where the arms of Christ are always open. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We also thank you for your donation, your generous giving, whether it's been by mail, cash app, or online. Please subscribe to our services on YouTube or Facebook. That way you can get notifications of events that are happening within our church, like our Friday night services that are taking place and other services and special events. Once again, we thank you for being with us today. And we look forward to worshiping with you soon in person. Coming to Sharon Seventh-day Adventist Church, where the arms of Christ are always open. God bless you.